I have lowered the prices. What more can I do? Do you know someone who loves old-time radio, classic TV, or movies? Plan ahead before this deal is gone. Go to oldtimeradiodvd.com. Place your order today. Now that's oldtimeradiodvd.com. You'll be glad you did. All right, John, I'll answer it. Uh, this is uh, the home of Dr. Dr. Watson, please to help. Gracious me. Oh, come in. Come in. These are not surgery hours, but the doctor is in. I'm sure he'll see you. Come in. Come in. Let me help you. John. John, dear, a patient. Please come uh, quickly. Hurry, dear. Uh, Hurry. I, I, I'm all right. Just to... To sit down. Uh, what is it? Uh, oh, good heavens, this man does look in bad shape. On the contrary, Watson, for a man of my years, I have never felt better. Oh, oh it it's... can't be. Be. You'll be dead for years. The Stories of Sherlock Holmes. Tonight, his last bow. never been so stunned with surprise in all my life. My wife, Mary, practically fainted. We, we simply couldn't believe our eyes. Although Sherlock Holmes had never been far from my thoughts in the years that followed the tragedy at the Reichenbach Falls, I had come to accept the fact that he had perished, along with his arch enemy, Professor Moriarty, in the dreadful swirling waters of that immense abyss. Yet... Here he was, peeling off yet another of his many disguises, requesting permission to smoke his favorite pipe, sitting on the sofa in my sitting room, as though nothing had happened. He appeared a little older, perhaps a little thinner, but his voice was still incisive and unchanged. The years fell away. I have to apologize, both for this sudden shock and for the great time of silence, but... Both were necessary. But I, I have never believed that you were dead. Not for years. Mary's right. She kept faith longer than I did. <laughs> but I, I hope surely the, 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 the chasm, the, the young Swiss Hans, he's I, sick. I know, you. I know. An explanation is required. It is essential. Well, the facts are these. Hans was mistaken. Moriarty and I did fall from the top ledge of the falls. We fell to the narrow pathway that leads up from that final ledge. Ah, oh, I knew what Moriarty was intent upon. I could see the purpose in his eyes. He had given me permission to write a note of farewell to you before this final encounter. He knew his own game was up. He intended taking me with him to his death. He rushed at me, grappling with me, trying to pin my arms to my sides and take me with him over into the water. Well, I have some knowledge of Japanese baritsu. It stood me in good stead. I slipped through his grasp and applied a throw. He screamed most horribly as he lost his balance. With my head over the brink, I saw him fall a great way. He struck a rock and then disappeared into the foam. But, but the tracks. I saw with my own eyes that two men went down the path, but none returned. No. I think my brain has never worked more speedily. Fate had placed a great chance my way. I'd long wished to retire. I knew that for as long as the world had faith in me and I lived in Baker Street, I should never be left in peace. Here was my great opportunity. If I could get out of the falls alive, then I could start a new life. I climbed the face of the cliff. But that's impossible. The, the face wall is sheer. Uh, not quite. I decided to attempt it. If I failed, then Moriarty would still win. If I succeeded, I could enjoy a life of retirement. And it was by far the hardest climb of my life. The times I imagined I heard Moriarty's voice screaming at me out of the depths. But I managed it. Well, I will not bore you with the details from then on. I took my time before returning to England. There was only one man who knew the truth. My brother, Mycroft. Oh, but Holmes. Holmes. 
Holmes, don't you think that you could have... It wasn't that I didn't trust you and Mary Watson, but I preferred it this way. We would have been bound to have taken up our friendship again. Others would have found out. Mrs. Hudson, Lestrade. I simply could not afford to take that chance. I still... I don't care, John. I don't care. Whatever Mr. Holmes says is all right as far as I'm concerned. I believe him and I stand by him. I will remain silent about all this. Oh, I'm so pleased. I'm so pleased. I really don't care. I don't know if I shall laugh or cry. Oh, no. Do neither, my dear. Why not go and brew us all a good strong pot of tea? I think that will do us all a power of good now. Excellent suggestion. Oh, yes, oh, yes, yes. Perhaps you're right, dear. That is a good idea. What a morning. What a wonderful, wonderful morning. Well, you seem to be well settled, Watson. The years have been kind to you. And Mary is unchanged. Yes, we have a lot to be thankful for. Oh, but... Now, come, Holmes. To the second part of your explanation... Why now? Why suddenly, after all this time, have you come back into our lives? Mm, good question. I made sure my retirement was complete. I lived the life of a hermit among my bees and books in a cosy cottage on the South Downs. But, through my craft, the only man who knew of my existence, I've been forced into action again. You see, Watson, this is 1914. And in the summer of this year, war will be declared. The greatest war this world has ever known. A world war. Oh, Holmes, you can't be serious. Oh, there are always rumors of war, always quarrels with Ireland, arguments with Germany, disagreements with the French, but an open conflict? Oh, never. Oh, I wish you were right. But the Kaiser has already made his plans. You'd be amazed if you knew how riddled this country is with German spies. It is inevitable, Watson. And that's why for some months now I've been engaged in counter-espionage. I can tell you that at this moment two gentlemen are engaged in a most important conversation in the garden of a large mansion just south of the city. One is known as von Bork, a remarkable man, the most devoted of the Kaiser's agents. His companion is Baron von Herling, the chief secretary of the German legation in this country. Now, they are putting the finishing touches to a plan that is the culmination of von Bork's work over the years. So far, as I can judge, the trend of events, you should be back in Berlin within the week. You will be surprised at the welcome that awaits you. <laughs> Your work in this country is most highly sought of. Oh, the English are easy to deceive. I have achieved everything simply because I am a born sportsman. It is not a pose. I hunt with the English squires. I play polo. <laughs> I match them at it every game. I box against the young army officers and sail against their best yachtsmen. <laughs> what is the result? No one takes me seriously. Quite a decent fellow for a German, you know, old boy. <laughs> <laughs> and all the time in this quiet country house of yours lives the most astute secret service man in Europe. You are a genius, my dear von Bohr. You flatter me, Baron. But I certainly make claims that my four years in this country have not been unproductive. I have never shown you my little store, have I? No. Would you mind stepping this way for a moment? Ah, yes, certainly. After you, Baron. Dankeschön. I must, of course, claim protection from the embassy for the important papers that I shall be taking with me. Oh, naturally. You have already been booked in the embassy entourage. There will be no difficulty for you or your baggage. Of course, it is just possible that none of us will have to go. England may leave France to her fate when we start to march. <laughs> There's no binding treaty between them. There is a definite treaty with Belgium. England will honor that. England is not ready for war. We are. A special war tax of 50 million has made it possible. But here, as far as essentials go, anti-submarine measures, munition storage, high-explosive bombs, nothing is prepared. How then can England come in? We have managed to stir the devil's brew, the Irish question. All England's thoughts are centered at home. She must think of her future. Yes, that is another matter. Mr. John Bull must decide whether to fight with his so-called allies or without them. But fight Germany, she must. This is a week of destiny. But come, you were speaking of your papers. Indeed I was. Here. Ah. Uh -huh. Oh. There, you see, the safe is opened, and here in neat files. Oh, see, harbor defenses, aeroplanes, 
Ireland. Egypt. Oh. All under their headings. Portsmouth Forts. The Channel. Each file is filled with papers and plans. Brilliant. Oh, not bad for the hard-drinking, hard-riding country squire. <laughs> <laughs> but the gem of my collection has yet to come. It will go here under... Naval signals. But you already have a good dossier here. Oh, out of date and a waste of paper. Somehow the Admiralty got an alarm and the coat has been changed. It I was see. a blow to me. But thanks to my checkbook and the good man Altamont, all will be well tonight. Oh, a pity that I cannot wait. You can imagine that things are in an upheaval at the embassy. We must all be at our post from now on. I had hoped to bring news of your great coup. Did Altamont name no owl? Here, read his telegram. We'll come without fail tonight and bring new sparking plugs, Altamont. The sparking plugs? <laughs> he poses as a motor expert, and I keep a full garage. In code, everything likely to come up is named after a spare part. If he talks of a radiator, it is a battleship. Oh. Of an oil pump, it is a cruiser, <laughs> and so on. Sparking plugs are naval signals. <laughs> I see. This was sent from Portsmouth at midday? Oh, by the way, what do you give him? In this case, 500 pounds. Uh, greedy rogue. They are useful, these traitors, but I begrudge them their blood money. I grudge Altamont nothing. He has never let me down. I know him well. I assure you, he is not a traitor. Uh. Yes, a very bitter Irish-American who is filled with intense hatred towards this country. Ah, Irish-American. With full Aryan blood on his mother's side. Uh, must you really go? He should be here at any moment. I regret. I can wait no longer. Then we place these things away, and I will see you off. Thank you. Ah, good. Come. I will walk to the gates with you to say goodbye. I shall call upon you tomorrow with the new, uh, <laughs> sparking plug. <laughs> Rest assured, we shall not fail, Baron. Oh, come in. Yes, Annie, what is it? Have they come? Lights of a car coming up the drive, sir. Must be Mr. Altamont, as you expected. Good, good. Then I go to welcome him. Thank you, Annie. That's great. Terrific. Uh, you're going to give me the glad hand here tonight? Okay. Just wait until I show you. I'm sure bringing home the bacon. <laughs> Come on, bring out the drinks. The show calls for celebration. Here's <laughs> Mutton, you all right? Good health. And the signals? Just as I promised. Every last one. Semaphore, lamp code, Marconi. Copy, mind you, not the original. That'd be too dangerous. But it's the real McCoy. You can lay to that. Well, of course, a copy is better than the original. If an original were missing, they would change the whole thing. Now, let's see. Say, hey, you don't mean to tell me you keep your secret papers in that? Why not? See, a wide-open contraption like that by a Yankee crook would be through that with a can opener. It would puzzle any crook to force that safe. Nothing can cut through that metal. It has a double combination lock. You need a word spelt out first and then a set of figures. In this case, it is A-U-G-U-S-T. August. And then 1914. August 1914. The date the war starts. Hey, come back. All I said, that's real smart. You got a heck of a lot of stuff in there. And it is all going out at once. I am what you would say... Shutting up shop tomorrow. Oh, well, I guess that goes for me, too. I'm not staying here on my lonesome. I'd rather watch the fun from the other side of the big pond. But you are an American Don't citizen. Don't no difference. Cuts no ice with a British copper. What about Jack James? He's an American citizen. They got him. He's doing time in Portland, ain't he? 
Incidentally, talking to James, it seems to me you don't do much to cover your men. What do you mean by that? Well, he was his employer, not so. It's up to you to see these guys don't fall down, and when they do fall, do you pick them up? It was James' own fault. He was too self-willed at his job. Ah, he was boneheaded, I'll give you that. But then there was Hollis. Ah, the man was mad. But lose it in the end, I grant you, but he was proper bugged. And now there's Steiner. Steiner? What about Steiner? Uh, I got him last night. He and his papers were all in Portsmouth jail. You go off to Germany, and that poor turf will, will have to stand the racket, and lucky if he gets off with his life. How could they have got to Steiner? This is the worst blow yet. Oh, you nearly had a worse one. For I guess they're not too far off me. You don't mean that. Sure do. My landlady down Frattenway had some inquiries made. When I heard that, I guessed it was time for me to hustle. Oh, don't ask me how it's worked. I don't want to know. I know Steiner is the fifth man you've lost since I signed on with you. I don't aim to be the sixth. Are you ashamed to see your men go down like this? How dare you speak to if me I like this? tell you the facts, I wouldn't be working for you now, would I? Oh, here's something more straight. I've heard tell that you Germans ain't sorry to see an agent put away once his work is done. How dare you suggest I give away my own agents? Well, there's a stool pigeon somewhere. It's up to you to find out where it is. Huh, I ain't taking no more chances. It's me for Holland and a ship from Rotterdam to little old New York. No other ship in line will be safe in a week's time. So, here's my last assignment. Ah, now, what about the dough? The what? The boodle, the reward, the 500 pounds. No, oh, you don't seem to have a very high opinion of my honor. You want some money before you give up that book you've wrapped up. That's about it. It's all here in the book. After all, this is a business proposition. All right. Have it your own way. I will write you a check. They are. This should be sufficient. Now place the book down there on the desk. After all, I don't see why I should trust you any more than you trust me. There. There is the check on the table. Now let me examine the contents of your parcel. I claim the right before you take the money. Uh, what? What kind of joke is this? This is the practical handbook of bee culture. Altamont, what kind of... Uh, 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 gently now. Gently. Let the chloroform do its work. That's it. That's it. Another glass, Watson? Or should I say Smith? Don't mind if I do, Governor. <laughs> You know, Holmes, I think this is the first time I've given an impersonation for you. Well, let's hope it'll be the last. And there he is, poor fellow, flat out on his own sofa while we enjoy wine from Franz Joseph's special cellar at the Schoenbrunn Paris. <laughs> oh, do open the window, Watson. The chloroform vapor does not help the palate. And while you're doing so, please touch the bell. Oh, very well, Holmes. Uh, there's little need to hurry, Watson. Just help me pile all this material from Von Bork's safe into this handy valise. Uh, there's no one in the house but the faithful old Annie. You ran, sir. Ah, yes, Annie. You'll be pleased to hear that all is well. Oh, I'm so pleased, sir. Oh, oh, dear. He does look bad, don't he? Simply out cold for a short while, Annie. Nothing serious. Oh, he was quite a kind master, sir. Within his rights, of course. He, he actually said he, he would pay for my passage to Germany. Can you imagine me living out there with all them Huns? <laughs> it would hardly be suitable, would it, oh, sir? Hardly. <laughs> Thank you for your help. Now, would you be kind enough to take all these things and place them into my car? Also, telephone to my brother, Mycroft, and report that all is going exactly as planned. Very good, sir. It'll be a pleasure, sir. Are you sure you can handle his nibs? I think so, Annie. I think so. But that will be all. Thank well, you. Thank you, sir. Well, Holmes, so far, so good. Uh, you must have been impersonating this American Altamont for some time to have ingratiated yourself so deeply in the favor of von Bork. Uh, it's taken nearly two years and entailed actually living in America... But now I can return to my books and my bees. Ah, here is my magnum opus, my book on bees. I intend to write a second volume, Observations on the Segregation of the Queen. Have you never missed the old life, the catching of ordinary, everyday criminals? Oh, not really. The passing of Moriarty, I rather lost interest. It was only when the Prime Minister himself appealed to me through Mycroft to enter the game again and tackle this gentleman, Von Bork, that I felt any enthusiasm. Von Bork is a superb spy. 
He matched the English in everything. Yeah. That's why I assumed the role of an Irish-American uh, was persuaded to join his team. Since then, I've managed to make most uh, of his plans go subtly wrong. And I've placed five of his top men in prison. Uh, I... I heard that. I heard what you... You said, Altmont. Good. Because you, Herr von Bork, will be the sixth bird in the cage. I shall get level with you, Altmont. If it takes me all my life, I shall get level with you. That was the favorite remark of the late, but far from lamented, Professor Mariotti. Colonel Sebastian Moran was also known to have muttered it. Damn you, Altamont, for a double-dyed traitor! I am no traitor. Neither am I Altamont. Surely my speech now shows you that I am not an American. Altamont of Chicago had no existence, in fact. <laughs> I used him and he's gone. Then, who are you? It's really immaterial to you, Herr von Bork. But I've had dealings with you and your kind. It was I who brought about the separation of Irene Adler and the late King of Bohemia. I also saved from murder Count von Grafenstein, your mother's elder brother. It was there I... There is only one man. You are Sherlock Holmes. But, but they told me you died years ago. The high command. Uh, it never does to believe the high command. Now, if you'll be so kind, we shall take you to the car and then to Scotland Yard. You are not the police. You have no right under British law to threaten me and abduct me. You are kidnapping a German citizen and stealing his private papers. They will reject you. I will take that chance. Now, come. Watson, take the papers. I... On board, come. No point in resisting now. This is the end. No, no. Stay there you are. Uh, the almighty Sherlock Holmes. You chloroformed me, dragged me down here, and forgot to even see if I was armed. The revolver, my German service revolver, left in my inner pocket. Well, this is the end. <laughs> Yes. Yes, I think so. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm not used to these high histrionics, Holmes. Uh, neither am I, but I had to make him think he was winning. I had to make him think that I was stupid enough not to check the revolver and replace the bullets with blanks. <laughs> yes, but anyway, I could let him escape with confidence. Ah, listen, there he goes. That's his car, not mine. Mine has a special geared-up engine, racing quality. Now, come on, Watson. This is the last time. My final bow. Now, let's get after him. He's the only one who can involve the Baron and lead us to the rest of the conspiracy. Holmes took the wheel of the motor car. And as we raced up the country lanes and out into the well-made roads, I pondered yet again on this strange twist to the autumn of our lives. Gone were the handsome cabs. Taxis were now replacing them. There were even motor buses, and the horse bus was fast disappearing. The underground railway tunneled its way under our very feet. What lay ahead? The hideous cruelty of a modern war with trenches and shelling, bayonet fighting, and even war in the air. It seemed that a curse of the Almighty hung heavy over a degenerate world. And there was a feeling of doom in the sultry and stagnant air. Holmes dragged me back to earth. There. There, look ahead. That's where Von Bork has left the car. He's rushed into the building. The lights are on. That means they can suspect nothing. Come, Watson. I'm careful now. The net closes for the last time. Careful. You are sure this is the truth, von Bork? I am sure. Baron von Herling will vouch safe for every word. Of course. We are lucky to have discovered the truth in good time. And we are assured that this Sherlock Holmes and his colleague are dead. I shot them myself. But he must act swiftly. He must cancel all previous plans. Our information is false. If we act upon if it... If we act upon it, the German war machine will start at a tremendous disadvantage. Herr Conrad, you must know as leader of the espionage unit in this country that Van Bork would never go to these lengths unless it were true. He must act now. I agree. The whole of our network is in jeopardy. I therefore disband this organization... You will all go your own ways, making for the fatherland with as much information as you can take. Oh, I'm in this book! Get in there! Hey! Oh, hey! Oh, stop oh, them! Oh, 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 if you wish to fight them, fight them! Mm. Well, Watson, my true friend, let us stand here on the terrace for a few minutes. This may be the last quiet talk we shall ever have. I know. It saddens me, Holmes. I remember so much of the past. How many cases, the rooms at 221B Baker Street... Dear Mrs. Hudson and those precious breakfasts. Mm, best meals of the day. The pipes we smoke before the fire, the fogs, the endless journeys and handsome cabs, the arguments with the trade, the agony columns in the newspapers. Oh dear, is it really over? 
Yes, it's over. The whole era is over. But we've ended it effectively, as far as you and I are concerned. We have beaten the most ruthless spy organization this country has ever known. It won't prevent the war that is upon us, but after the war, perhaps because of our small efforts, a cleaner, better, stronger land will lie in the sunshine after the storm has cleared. Let us hope so, Watson. Let us hope so. For five years, Graham Armitage has played Sherlock Holmes and Kerry Jordan has taken the part of Dr. Watson. And the series was written and produced by Dennis Falvig.